Let's talk about the book, Trial of the Century, and Clarence Darrow. I remember growing up, if I had an argument with my Nana, she'd say, who are you, Clarence Darrow? What do you think you are, Clarence Darrow? <laughs> and there's a reason his name is the equivalent with the standard for great lawyering. It's captured in this book. Yeah. You know, I was um, a young teenager when, on a summer day, I plucked a book off my father's densely packed bookshelf, and it was a biography on the great Clarence Darrow, who I'd never heard of. And, uh, you know, I sat down and I started reading it. The more I read, the more fascinated I became. And I, it was 520 pages by the great writer Irving Stone. Uh, and I, as soon as I finished the 520 pages, I turned back to the beginning and started all over again. I've revisited that book uh, throughout my life. So I guess you could say uh, this Trial of the Century, my new book, uh, is more than 50 years in the making. At the uh, Towards the end of the biography, there was a chapter on the Scopes Monkey Trial, 1925, Dayton, Tennessee. It was actually Darrow's most famous trial of the many uh, famous trials that he had. And it, it told the story of how in the 1920s, the religious fervor sort of swept the nation and they began banning books in science, particularly evolution. And the state of Tennessee took it a step further and made it a crime for a school teacher to utter the word evolution in a classroom, even though there was a subchapter on evolution in the state approved textbooks. There's a picture of 25 year old John Scopes, school teacher. He was promptly arrested, handcuffed, taken away, and criminally charged with teaching evolution. And the great fundamentalist leader, William Jennings Bryan, three-time presidential candidate who had helped pass the law, was so happy about it. He volunteered to prosecute and convict Scopes. That incensed Clarence Darrow as he's sitting in his Chicago office. And he volunteers to, for free, defend John Scopes in what became a trial of the century, a titanic clash. There they are together at the beginning of the trial, sitting in the courtroom, Daryl and Bryant, this titanic clash between two epic figures in American culture in the 1920s. Uh, both lawyers, both poetic orators, and the climactic moment in the trial came when Daryl realized he's losing. He's got a biased judge, a biased jury. And he decides to call Brian, the prosecutor, to the witness stand. And the judge says, wait a minute, you can't do that. He's the prosecutor. Brian stands up and says, your honor, I have nothing to fear. I'm happy to testify as an expert on the Bible that everything in it should be taken literally. So the judge says, well, OK, but I, there are too many people in this courtroom. People are fainting because of the heat. Uh, I'm fearful that the courtroom is going to collapse onto the first floor. So he moves the trial outdoors to a stage left over from July 4th activities. And you can see I printed uh, 38 photographs from the trial in the book. 1925, thousands of people standing out on the lawn in front of the courthouse they are listening to this withering cross-examination by Clarence Darrow, who utterly destroyed William Jennings Bryan. The crowd, of course, they were all Bryan supporters. By the end, by the time the gavel bangs down, the crowd is surrounding Clarence Darrow and congratulating him. They've changed their opinion. And Daryl looks back and there he sees Brian, a solitary figure standing alone, not a friend in the world, utterly broken. Days later, Brian lays down for a nap and he never wakes up. It's an incredible oh. story. The New York Times at the time described it as the most amazing court scene in Anglo-Saxon history. It was the trial of the century then and it still is now, Megan. I only have a short time left, Greg, but... How do you think Clarence Darrow would see some of these issues that we're debating right now in this country, like the bans on critical race theory in schoolrooms and some of the stuff that DeSantis, who's anti-wokeness, I support, but there's a question about whether he's gone too far in trying to shut down you yeah. know, this, this kind of speech. I talk a lot about it 
in the book, especially the epilogue. Darrow would fight against the partisan censorship and political discourse, the polarizing disinformation campaigns, classroom indoctrination, the punitive cancel culture whereby you know, conformity of thought now supplants robust debate in America. He would wage war against all of that. And you know what? My idol, Clarence Darrow, would win. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan, and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax pros at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, even those who took PPP loans, and even if you had increases in your sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.